The USA basketball team is a lot like NBA All-Star voting. Yes, the team is absolutely stacked with the best players in the world, but there's always great players who get left off. The most famous example of this was Isaiah Thomas, who back in 1992 was famously left off the Dream Team, something he hasn't let go of to this day. I don't know what went into that process. I met the criteria to be selected, but I wasn't. Fast forward to 2024, and after USA were humiliated at the FIBA World Cup for the second consecutive tournament, all the stars came together and formed the Avengers, tasked with the responsibility of bringing home gold and reminding the world that USA runs basketball. This team on paper is one of the greatest basketball teams ever assembled. But it's also one of the most controversial, because history is repeating itself, and we are seeing one of the biggest snubs of all time. But this time it involves more than one player, and unlike in 1992, we know exactly who's missing and why. The Team USA roster for the 2024 Olympics was announced back in 2023, which breaks a very old tradition where all the top players were invited to a training camp to compete against each other. The best players from tryouts were then chosen for the team. One player who spoke out about about this was Kyrie Irving. I, guess I grew up in a time too where we actually had to try out for USAB and we did meet up as a group and as peers and there was a mutual respect that we earned from one another and trying out and then seeing what five meshed well. When talking about the best American point guards in the NBA, Kyrie Irving is somewhere very near the top of the list. And unlike a lot of the big names selected by Team USA, who are there in large part due to nostalgia, Kyrie Irving is actually still playing at the highest level of NBA basketball. This season he co-starred alongside Luka Doncic, leading the Mavericks to the finals. He is consistently been a top 5 point guard for over a decade and is considered among his peers to be the most skilled player in the world. LeBron James, who we all know wields a ton of power within the basketball world, was one of the key members who helped assemble this team. He specifically stated on his podcast that he wishes he could play with Kyrie Irving again. I'm so f***ing mad at the same time that I am not his running mate anymore. And yet still, four point guards were chosen ahead of Kyrie Irving. Steph Curry, Tyrese Halliburton, Drew Holiday, and another we'll get into later. Now nobody is complaining about Steph Curry. Any basketball team in the world, he's starting for. But I'm sure the majority of NBA fans will agree that Kyrie Irving is better than Halliburton and Holiday. So why were they picked ahead of Kyrie? USA Basketball will tell you roles and fit. They'll say with Curry they don't need another ball dominant scoring guard and they'd rather choose a different profile of player, like Tyrese Halliburton who's a tall point guard with elite playmaking and 3 point shooting, or Drew Holiday who's considered the best on ball defender in the NBA. They will gaslight fans into believing that these selections are for basketball reasons. But Kyrie Irving wasn't the biggest snub. That would be Jalen Brown. Last season he became the highest earning player in the NBA with a contract worth almost $350 million. He proved he was worth the money, made the all-star team, the Celtics were the number one seed with the best record in the league, won the championship, was finals MVP and yet he didn't make the Team USA roster? How does this make sense? Both Kyrie and Jalen Brown made the NBA Finals, excluding Luka Doncic who's Slovenian, they were the two best American players in those series. And yet, three players from this year's Finals are playing for Team USA, but Kyrie and Jalen Brown aren't. I understand this team was announced before the NBA playoffs, but this is where things start to get really suspicious. Because let's be honest, Kawhi Leonard is a legacy pick. No denying, when healthy, he's one of the best two-way players in the NBA. But Jalen Brown is a better NBA player right now. You can justify taking Kawhi because of his name and who he was, but Kawhi Leonard just got injured, no shock there, and he's had to withdraw from the Olympic team. Meaning Team USA just lost a 6-8 two-way wing, so you would think based on their criteria of selecting a specific profile of player, that it would be a like for like replacement. Surely the logical replacement for Kawhi Leonard would be Jalen Brown. Instead, the player chosen was Derek White, 
a 6'4 guard who has never been an all-star in his career. Instead of replacing Kawhi Leonard, a former finals MVP, with the current finals MVP who plays the same position in his prime right now, they chose to replace him with a role player who plays a completely different position. How are there three players from the Boston Celtics championship winning team on Team USA but the finals MVP isn't one of them? It doesn't make any sense, if they needed a Kawhi replacement, why not choose Jalen Brown? If they needed another point guard, specifically one with USA basketball experience, why not choose Kyrie Irving, who has won gold twice? So why were these two players excluded when both clearly met the criteria to be selected? When both players have played for USA before? Jalen Brown is pointing the finger one way. It's not at head coach Steve Kerr, it's not at the USA Basketball Committee, but it's at Nike. And when Gilbert Arenas explained why last year, nobody listened. If you take the politics out of USA Basketball, then the stars will play. Yeah. He, Nike's going to only want Nike players. Yeah. They're not going to promote the Pumas. Why LaMelo Ball is not on there? You know, Pumas not going to want to, they're not going to be interested. You know, so LaMelo's not going to want to be, even though he wants to play on a team, right? That there was in regards to Trey Young and LaMelo Ball both being snubbed from last year's USA World Cup squad. Both players wanted to play and weren't chosen. What LaMelo and Trey both had in common was a signature shoe with Puma and Adidas. USA Basketball is sponsored by Nike. And for a very long time, Nike have made it very obvious they don't want to give exposure to competitive brands. Understandably so, if you're a business and you're paying millions to exclusively sponsor something, you don't want your competitors to be promoted in the process. Anthony Edwards is standing in the back. Now anyone who's ever played basketball and taken these team photos knows the tallest players go to the back. But Tyrese Halliburton is taller than Anthony Edwards. The reason Ant is in the back is because he's an Adidas athlete and they do not want his signature shoe to be on display. If you don't believe me, fine, check this out. Once again, all non-Nike sponsored players are standing in the back. But here's the smoking gun. Every player in this photo was Nike except Dwight Howard. Now look at where Coach K is sitting and tell me with a straight face that isn't deliberate. So now that we've established that there is a clear Nike agenda in regards to the USA basketball team, we can talk about how this pertains to Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brown. Neither of them are Nike athletes, but we know that you don't have to be Nike to play for USA. What we do know is both players used to play for Team USA, coincidentally when they both wore Nike, but that's not why they're not on the team. This is why. In 2021, Nike terminated Kyrie Irving's contract following the whole anti-Semitism controversy. Interestingly enough, guess who not only defended Kyrie Irving, but also attacked Nike during this situation? It was former teammate Jalen Brown saying, quote, Since when did Nike care about ethics? Basically, Jalen Brown accused them of being unethical and being major hypocrites for trying to play the moral high ground in regards to anything. Jalen Brown has now learned the hard way that when you speak out against the establishment, the establishment will suppress you, and they have enough influence and power to be able to gaslight and manipulate through the media that the finals MVP in the NBA should not be on Team USA, and a role player who plays for the same team should be instead. People will watch this video and still believe that this is a basketball decision, and that's the power that Nike have. They will try to justify selecting Derek White ahead of Jalen Brown and Kyrie Irving. Listen to Grant Hill right here. Guys who've been um, finals MVPs, guys who've been a part of the program, guys who've won gold medals, um, guys who I respect, admire, and enjoy watching. And But the responsibility that I have is to put together a team, and a team that complements each other, a team that fits, a team that will um, give us the best opportunity for success. And um, so, you know, whatever theories that might be out there, um, you know, they're, they're just that. But that's, that's my responsibility. I'm calling Cap. You talk about building a team and one that fits together. Well, there's no better basketball team right now than the Boston Celtics. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have played together their entire careers. I'm pretty sure they fit very well alongside Drew Holiday and even Derek White, a core that just won the NBA championship. 
I've also heard people make the argument that if a player is going to play a limited role, it's better to choose somebody like Derek White over Jalen Brown. Based on what? Team USA win gold when they put all the best players on the same team. It's when they start trying to overthink and treating international ball like the NBA, choosing guys like Austin Reeves and Walker Kessler. That's when they lose. In the later rounds of the tournament, 12 guys aren't going to play. If Team USA are playing France, Canada, Germany or Serbia in the final or semi, they're not going to be playing Derek White. So I'd argue having the best players there at practice every day, applying pressure and keeping the OGs on their toes would be more valuable to Team USA than Derek White knowing his role and his fit. The truth is, Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brown have been excluded from USA basketball for political reasons. This has nothing to do with basketball. You already have Drew Holiday, you do not need Derek White. End of discussion. But listen, if Kyrie and Jalen Brown are both excluded for political reasons, fine. I still don't understand the Derek White selection, especially when you already have Drew Holiday. Who they should have taken is the 17 year old kid from Duke, who just proved in a scrimmage against Team USA that he's ready to go right now. Cooper Flag is the projected number one pick in next year's draft and in a scrimmage against Team USA playing against the best of the best, not only did he hold his own, but he stood out leading a select team with considerably less talent and pushing Team USA all the way to the final buzzer. NBA players were singing his praises, talking about how ready he is and how much he wants it. That's the guy USA should have chosen. Because historically, USA have taken a college player to the Olympics. We saw it with Christian Leitner in 92. He was on the dream team. Ameka Okafor after winning the national championship at UConn was on the Olympic team in 04 and most recently Anthony Davis played for USA and won gold after winning a title at Kentucky. Cooper Flagg was right there, could have and should have been chosen. He's been tipped as the future of USA basketball, the best young American prospect in a league that is becoming more and more international, so having him come along for the ride, learn from the best, would not only help his development going into college next season, but would also give him a taste of the international game, so that when he's inevitably chosen in the future, he's already been there and experienced that. And since we're talking about politics, diversity is going to come up. And having a white player on the team would not only appeal to a certain demographic of America, but would also help those fans get behind potentially the next great white American basketball star. Those fans have been waiting for somebody like Cooper to come along since Larry Bird. They found it in Caitlin Clark and are now following the women's game, which is now bigger than ever. And if you want to sell Cooper Flag as that guy, a future face of the NBA, then having him play for Team USA alongside the best players of the previous generation would be a great decision from a marketing and business perspective. If you're picking the 12 best players, then I understand excluding him. But if Cooper Flag being there is only at the expense of Derek White, then that's definitely worth it. But what do you guys think? If you've made it up to this point, share your thoughts and feedback down below in the comments and click the big box in the middle of your screen. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll enjoy this video about FIBA in the Olympics too. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if new around. And on that note, it's DKM signing out. Until next time, and peace.